A century ago, the people of Western Europe were astonished and delighted by the cultural and artistic discoveries being made in Japan. After two and a half centuries of self-imposed exile, the culture of Japan and the work of its artists was available to Europeans and rapidly became the passion of the Western intelligentsia, the obsession of Occidental artists. One of the foremost French modern artists, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, strongly influenced by the woodblock printing art of Japan, developed his own impressionistic style of poster art. It was a sensation. The Dutch painter, Vincent van Gogh, inspired by his friend Lautrec, also adopted principles of woodblock art, especially the use of large areas of bright color and the omission of realistic perspective. Across the English Channel, however, a different facet of Japanese culture was of special interest to the people of the British Isles. Fiercely independent and traditionally more bellicose than their European neighbors, like the Japanese, they were products of an ancient and heroic martial culture that adored the concept of chivalry and honor under arms as expressed in the legends of King Arthur and Robin Hood. The British were instantly captivated by the newly discovered fighting arts of Japan. The Japanese, for their part, were just as fascinated by the ability of a tiny group of islands off the coast of Europe, so very similar to their own, to control five-eighths of the known world. The bond that formed between the two ancient monarchies was instant and formidable. British military instructors were soon heading east to instruct the Japanese in the arts of modern warfare. Japanese jiu-jitsu instructors headed west to demonstrate and enthrall British audiences with their ability to subdue and often humiliate professional wrestlers and prize fighters weighing half as much again as themselves. William Barton Wright, an English engineer, studied jiu-jitsu under Yuki Otani and later introduced his version of the art into Britain, calling it Baritsu. His success was such that even the renowned British detective Sherlock Holmes claimed to have a knowledge of it. Other Englishmen were also active in the martial arts. E.J. Harrison studied judo at the Kodokan under its founder Jigoro Kano. F.J. Norman, swordsmanship with Master Umezawa at the Takanazawa police station. Yet as freely as the British roamed the Japanese Empire, few, if any, reached the satellite nation of Okinawa. The martial arts foreigners studied were those of mainland Japan. While Tokyo was alive with foreigners of every nationality, the people of Okinawa and their indigenous martial arts remained undisturbed in their distant, semi-tropical islands. In Naha, Shuri and Tomani, the ancient passageways between the simple rustic houses echoed with the sounds of callous fists striking rough wooden boards. In tiny dojos and in carefully screened gardens, the unique martial arts of the Ryukyu Islands were passed on in the utmost secrecy to selected youngsters of good character as they had been for centuries. The ancient unarmed Okinawan art, with admixtures of Chinese boxing, was known variously as Ti, Te, or Uchinadi. The outside world would not be aware of it for another 20 years. The art of the upper classes with which it was associated, that of the six-foot staff, would not be seen outside of Okinawa in its most perfect form for almost a century.
As the techniques of Yomani Ryu are very different from other styles of Bojutsu, experience in another school may not be helpful and may even be a hindrance. It is essential therefore that sufficient time is spent on basic training for a degree of mastery to be obtained that would allow the student to progress to the intermediate level. One of the distinctions of the Yomani school of Bojutsu is the emphasis placed on the strong and correctly formed grip and the ability to modify that grip safely to suit the prevailing circumstances. In Nukisashi, the hands never leave the bow and therefore a strong grip and a state of complete alertness are maintained at all times. Nukisashi technique allows the grip and the length of the weapon relative to the opponent to be adjusted by sliding the hand smoothly along its length. This exercise develops a strong grip and correct timing that, with footwork and body movement, are the essential elements in the correct performance of your money Ryu technique. Unlike other schools of Bojutsu, your money technique is performed in a continuous, smooth, flowing manner. Repetitive exercises like this help develop dexterity, rhythm and timing, which prepare the student for training in more advanced techniques. This technique, performed in the Shikodachi stance, appears to be an elementary blocking technique. However, as shown here, it is actually an exercise for developing a strong grip in both hands. This is the practice method for the horizontal side strike as it is performed in the kata Tsuji no Kun. Yokuuchi is a powerful technique that can be used with equal effect on both sides. The power with which it is applied is generated by the legs and the hips and the close proximity of the technique to both means that little energy is lost in transmission. As is almost always the case in the martial arts, power comes from a strong stance and dynamic hip rotation and is focused in the center of the body. This distinctive upwards movement is very difficult to perform and requires practice to build the necessary concentration and control. Long-term training develops strength in the sides of the body as well as a powerful hara, the point close to the navel from which, in the martial arts, focused power flows. From the correct performance of this fundamental technique, we learn the subtle balance between the power hand, the furthest away from the opponent, and the guiding hand, the nearest. Even when performed slowly, the technique should make the weapon sound as if it's cutting the air. Correct performance of the two-handed thrust will efficiently transfer weight and power to the opponent's body. Keeping the bow close to the body at all times, aim directly at your target. To the basic Kesauchi strike that describes a diagonal arc on either side, forward and towards the opponent, 
we now add a step. This makes the relationship of arm and leg movement much clearer to the performer, develops coordination and good technique, as well as correct timing and effective striking power. As the energy that is finally delivered to the target is developed in the legs and hips, the more efficient and fluid the leg, hip and hand coordination, the greater the impact. Every effort must be made to perfect these key movements. Diligent practice produces a smooth, fluent movement that is the signature of the school and the envy of all weapon enthusiasts. In the basic version of this technique, the weapon is swung forward in a simple arc until it reaches the opponent. In this, the more advanced application, the bow is swung in an arc and then thrust forward to deliver an effective blow. This is a very powerful and versatile technique that is unique to the Yumani score and that requires constant long-term practice to perfect. The force developed is so great that when this technique is performed by the most senior instructors, the stoutest white oak bow will bend noticeably along its entire length. Fumikaye refers to the performance of techniques in the same position by switching the legs. This adds a degree of complexity to the movements which helps develop the performer's technique. As the techniques are performed, the hands are stood back and forth as the stance is changed, but never actually leave the weapon. This sliding movement of the hands is also used to adjust the length of the weapon relative to the opponent's position. To this combination of basic techniques is added a circular block. The performance of these techniques on both sides teaches the correct positioning of the arms, precise body movement, proper foot placement, and the all-important application of power. Foot movement is the foundation of all technique and must be studied carefully until it is perfected. If the foundation is weak, overall performance cannot improve. Adding movement to the basic techniques makes them three-dimensional and helps develop disciplined and therefore efficient movement. Complex movements can only be learned by repetitive practice. This sort of training is important in any martial art, but particularly San Yomani Liu, due to the complexity of the techniques. The move forward is smooth, rapid and perfectly coordinated with the powerful forward thrust. As soon as the technique is delivered, the weapon is rapidly retrieved and the on-guard position assumed.
power is generated by the coordinated movement of the legs, hips, trunk and arms. As the performer advances, his weight is shifted forward. The energy resulting from the torque of the body and its kinetic energy is transferred rapidly through the weapon into the target. This thrust is delivered in a rising movement as the performer advances. This is beneficial for two reasons. It makes the weapon very difficult for the opponent to see and therefore counter. It also means that even a strike that is not perfectly aimed will land effectively somewhere on the opponent's body. The diagonal strike, kesa uchi, is one of the core techniques of Yomani Ryubojutsu. It is a very powerful strike that is delivered diagonally downwards and, in its advanced form, includes a thrust forward at the end of the arc. Kesa uchi takes its name from the sash worn by Buddhist priests slung from one shoulder. The angle described by the garment as it lays across the chest of the wearer exactly matches the downward path of the weapon, hence the name. In Yomani Ryu, the performer is always moving or ready to move. There is no point at which his force is static or his balance anything less than perfect. Unlike other styles of Bojutsu, when a blow is delivered, the weapon is instantly drawn back and readied for the next movement automatically. This sort of repetitive training in moving combination techniques ingrains into the student the smooth but powerful movement of the legs and hips that underpins the Yumani Ryu method. It cannot be explained. It can only be learned, experienced and then perfected. Anyone planning to study your money do seriously is recommended to practice the basic techniques as well as their combinations. While the movements may seem simple and straightforward to the casual observer, they appear so only because of the experience and the ability of the instructor. Legend has it that the second most notable person in the development of Yumani Ryu Bojutsu, Chinnen Sanda, was frustrated with his training and felt he was making little if any progress. He slept for a while and on waking, saw a bow that bounced repeatedly up at its end. This inspired him to absorb this distinctive bouncing movement into Yumani Ryu Bojutsu to add power to the techniques 
and strengthen both its defensive and retaliatory aspects. Yeah, I'm going to do is, when you're using ball, always using part is longer, the block becomes short, and you stay behind your ball. Always stay behind your ball. Elbow is always in, not like this. Here, point your opponent, step, strike, and block. When you strike, you never hold the ball and block. Supposed to bounce. Bounce. When you step, you like bump and strike. Next, when you swing a ball, basic one is like cut. Cut. But later you're supposed to practice drawing. Drawing. Next. When you're attacking the opponent's feet or shin and get down in Nukizuki, you're supposed to follow opponent. Get down uke, step back, follow opponent. That time very important one is not supposed to move your left arm. Left arm is always set. Go back, point your opponent's target, and strike. At that time, the elbow is lower, then shift. This was standard Gedan no Kizuki. And application is follow. In Amanadio, we are not using cat stance. Use both feet flat, here, but here is that just touch the ground and squeeze your ball. And the ankle is very important, and calf is squeezed and out. And always repushing from low to high. Low to high. As the student progresses, he is encouraged to study the movement of the cutter, free of the need to manipulate a long, and for the beginner at least, awkward weapon. In this way, the body movements and embusen, the unique pattern of foot movements of the cutter, can be learned. As this knowledge is accumulated, a point will be reached when the instructor will recommend that a bow be added to the training equation. Yomani Ryu is noted for its flowing motion, and it is from this that its power and effectiveness springs. This exercise, while apparently simple, is actually a very complex one, 
in the sense that it contains the key elements of the style. The rapid and agile foot movements and the strong cutting motion are hallmarks of your money liu and result from the total coordination of the performer's body. It should be noted that at no time do the performer's hands leave his weapon. Rather, they are adjusted to suit his performance. This is unique to the style and in practice means that there is never a weak point during the performance or in fact when the bow is being wielded in earnest when the weapon is being held in one hand only. Formal exercises play an important part in all martial traditions. They both teach the art and preserve it. Each is a time capsule of knowledge that will be left for the generations that follow. As with all demonstrations of kata in this presentation, the exercise is shown first from a single camera directly facing the performer in the starting position, and then in slow motion using multiple camera views. Although this is the first kata the student learns, it is also in some ways the most difficult. It was developed within the Yomani school and is designed to teach nukisashi, the sliding action of the hands on the bow that is used to change its length and disposition. When the basic version of Suji no Kun is learned, the student is taught the more advanced version. This kata and its companion, Cho no Kun Dai, were developed by the author's teacher, Choji Kishaba, at the request of the prefectural government of Okinawa. They are therefore unique to the Yomani school. This first part features turning techniques, while the second is notable for attacks to the shin area.
The Kumibo exercises are learned after a student has a grasp of the fundamental techniques and the four basic kata. They have a direct equivalent in karate's one-step sparring methods. Kumibo training teaches an appreciation of correct distance and movement in relation to one's training partner. From regular practice, one also learns how to absorb the opponent's attacks using circular movements of the body and the weapon. This not only neutralizes his power, but also prevents your weapon being broken by it. Kumibo training is considered to be at the intermediate level of study.
Your money due is above all else a practical method of self-defense involving the use of a six-foot wooden staff. It has until now been kept secret to maintain the advantage its practitioners have had over others and has only been taught to very few people since its inception. And what an interesting and elite group they are. Chin Nen Sanda, who was prompted by a dream or perhaps divine inspiration to develop what we now know as Yamani Chin Nen Yu. Yabiku Moden, the teacher of Taira Shinken, who taught Kobudo to the famous Motokatsu Inoue, and whose younger students included Fumio Demura, and a promising young man from Naha called Morio Higaona. And of course, last but not least, Chinmen Masami, who taught Kishaba Choji, whose premier student, Oshiro Toshihiro, is the author of this presentation. Yamani Ryu Bojitsu is the treasure of the Okinawan martial arts, made public here for the first time in any form. Whether it results, as legend has it, from the assistance of divine powers or the accumulated knowledge of countless generations of martial artists, we cannot tell. What we do know is that even with divine inspiration and guidance, no martial art can be learned without skilled instruction, dedication and hard work over a long period. The Dragon Associates website features everything from fast-breaking news to a martial arts store, information on the latest videos to back issues of Dragon Times and Fighting Arts magazine. For information you can depend on from the best instructors and martial arts writers in the world, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.dragon-tsunami.org. Dragon Associates since 1968. 
Tsunami martial arts videos are recognized worldwide as the very finest of their kind. Tsunami's dedicated production team has captured, in their most perfect form, the classical schools of karate. In doing so, they have produced a historical resource of enormous value to this and future generations. The best instructors, the best photography and sound, the best writing and research. Tsunami, the best martial arts videos in the world.